Good evening, one and all. We welcome you all to the international webinar series on holistic health, well being, and sustainable development 2022 2023, commemorating Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsu, nation celebrating 75 years of independence, and India's G20 presidency, and United Nations Sustainable Development Goals 2015 to 2030 as part of awareness and campaigns in collaboration with Sri Holistic Health Foundation India and Sri Research Institute, Center for Art, Sciences and Building. Before we start our sessions, let's take the blessings of Almighty. Shubham Purutvam Kalyanam Arukyam Dhala Sampada Shatru Buddhi Vinashaya Deepa Jyotir Namusude Deepa Jyotir Namusude Shubham Purutvam Kalyanam Arukyam Dhala Sampada Shubham Purutvam Kalyanam Arukyam Dhala Sampada With the blessings of Almighty, we shall continue with today's commemorations. Yeah, today we are commemorating World Pianos Day. Which is same as the number of keys of the piano. That is 88th day of the year. Is commemorated as World Piano Day. Which is same as the number of keys on the piano. So this year it takes place on March 29th. It was founded by a group of like-minded people who aim to create a platform for piano related projects to promote the development of music and to share the joy of playing the piano. For many reasons, but mostly because it doesn't hurt to celebrate the piano and everything around it, performance, composers, piano builders, tuners, newers, and most importantly, the listener, replied Nils Fram, the German pianist and composer who initiated World Piano Day in 2015. The idea behind it was to celebrate the piano across the world by holding events, performances, master classes, lectures, etc. Lectures, etc. 
So since its launch, World Pianado has gained immense popularity with participation from pianists, promoters, organizers, distributors, technicians, piano enthusiasts, and basically anyone associated with the instrument. Hammered dulcimers were the very first string instrument used since the Middle Ages in Europe. After several attempts of creating string keyboard instruments, the mechanisms of clavichord and the harpsichord were developed during the 17th century. As the Mozart piano underwent changes from 1790 to 1860, the modern structure of the instrument came into existence. These alterations were as a result of preferences of composers and pianists who wanted more powerful and sustained sounds. Over time, the tonal range of the piano was also increased from five to seven octaves that can be found in the modern day piano. World Piano Day is a celebration of the piano and everything connected with it. So this day celebrates the music of the past and promotes its evolution. So on this 88th day of the year, we come together to celebrate one of the greatest instruments of all time and all those who make this day possible. So in 1700s, the piano was invented. Bartolomeo Cristofori of Italy invents the piano. The piano evolved, evolves in 1821. Sebastian Eddard events double escape meant action, which makes it easier to rapidly play and repeat once. Notes. The World Piano Day team announces the construction of the Clavins M450, the Vertical Concert Grand Piano in 2015. In 2018, Christian Henson of Spitfire Audio launches a website, piano book .co.uk dedicated to creating and sharing instrument samples for free in Piano Book in 2018. So most keyboards have 66, 72 or 88 keys. For a beginner, 66 keys are sufficient for learning how to play piano. You can play most music on a 72 key instrument although playing the classical, classical piano requires all 88 keys. So we have three variants of uh, pianos, 66 for starter, 72 for medium, and 88 for professional. Though, you know, either of these can be used if you are used to. And if on this World Piano Day, if you would like to learn piano by yourself, yes. We can believe or we believe the best way to learn piano is from a qualified and experienced instructor. Some students have an ear for music and can benefit from self-learning. So if you have an innate aptitude or if you are blessed with the aptitude for the music you can learn from yourself edwin welty invented a player which controlled all the aspects of performance automatically so that this machine would play back a recorded version exactly as if original pianist were sitting at the piano and this is what known as player piano on this day, pianists can celebrate by playing a beautiful piece on their pianos. So whether you are an amateur or seasoned, there's no excuse not to start learning the new piece that you have been meaning to for a while now. If you are someone who have always dreamed of playing the piano, but never had chance to, this is your chance. Commit yourself to learning how to play the piano by starting with the beginner's lessons on the internet. And if the interest develops, enrolling in professional piano classes. And if you have uh, Mac uh, devices like Mac books or iPads or even iPhones, there is an Ill inbuilt app which is professionally made, uh, which is a professional app that is available uh, for free known as GarageBand, 
where you can learn uh, music on your own using your iPhones, iPad and MacBooks. And that's a great device even used by professionals and it is an uh, international standard. Of course, Macs are known for their performance. Even entire film and media industries uses Macs for the entire film production process. And if you are someone who always love to play, then this is a great opportunity to not only play for the people, but also take out some time to teach children and the new learners so that they can start learning. And take time to enjoy some classical music while driving or at home. You can even add a concert and invite friends and family to join on these celebrations. The piano was first called Graves and Bellows, Sol Piano E40, which translates to soft and loud harpsichord. The exact middle of the piano keyboard is not middle C. It is the space between F and F above middle C. There are 12,000 parts that make up a piano and 10,000 of these parts move. So it's an intricate machine. And the most expensive piano, the price goes to the Galaxy Piano, which is priced at $1.36 million because its body is made up from 24 karat gold. Each string in the piano usually holds around 168 pounds of tension. And most pianos have a total tension of around 18 to 20 tons. That's like so much of tension. The piano has been around since 1700s, creating beautiful music for hundreds of years. This intricate instrument has the widest range of tones and can be a campaign and melody at the same time, making it a complete independent instrument and earning it the title King of Musical Instruments. And playing the piano helps improve your well-being. Studies show that playing the piano improves mental health and people who play piano tend to be experience less anxiety and depression. A few minutes on the piano can improve your self-esteem and make feel more positive too. This day not only celebrates the piano and pianist, it gives us an appreciation for the contribution that composers have made to the world of music and manufacturers of the instrument who are part of the evolution of the instrument. So with this, we shall end the commemoration of World Piano Day. Today is also Manatee Appreciation Day. This is an international commemoration. This manatee is also known as endangered uh, sea cows. So March 29th is to raise awareness for the endangered sea cows who are quickly falling victims to the pollution, global warming and hunting. And these manatees weigh as much as 1,200 pounds but survive on seagrass alone. They are purely herbivores and they have no natural enemy except humans. These humans have become notorious criminals on the planet, abusing the nature and all the species on the planet. And they have no, no natural enemy except humans as this day is celebrated to appreciate, learn more about and protect the bloated 
bean bag look alike from the deadly human activities. The harmless, gentle giants of the sea are closely related to elephants with their egg shaped heads and flat tail. They are 30, uh, sorry, they are 10 to 13 feet in length, weight almost weighs around uh, 1300 pounds, and despite looking bulky, can move or swim very quickly if necessary. You can find them in slow rivers, saltwater bays, estuaries, canals, and other coastal areas, spending their lives either sleeping, eating, or traveling. They don't have a care in the world and the only need to surface occasionally, replenish their oxygen. Most of the time, they spend underwater. It's quite unfortunate that manatees have become endangered in recent years, mainly due to loss of their habitat. Comprising only three distinct species worldwide, West African, Amazonian, and West Indian, these aquatic animals regularly fall victim of poaching for their meat and destruction of waterways and careless collision with ships. New developments cause their natural nesting areas to be destroyed, contaminate the water with toxic sewage, manure and fertilizers and cause algal blooms. Manatees often fatally collide with boats and ships in the shallow waters where they need to live to feed on the seagrass, their only food resource. Manatee Appreciation Day was birthed by the world's leading manatee conservation organization, Save the Manatee Club, founded in 1981 by the songwriter Jimmy Buffett and former U.S. Senator Bob Graham. The organization works to protect the manatee and its habitat. It's founded this holiday to back its mission of rescuing the slow-moving sea cows from thoughtlessly deadly human activities. The oldest manatee on July 21st, 1948, Snooty, is born at Miami Aquarium and Tackle Company and dies 69 years later, two days after his birthday in 1948. Sorry, on July 21st, 1948, it was born after 69 years, after two days after his birthday, he died. The Florida manatee is enlisted under the Endangered Species Preservation Act of 1996 for the first time. In 1967, first enlisted as an endangered manatee rehabilitation attempt. Cincinnati Zoo's manatee facility releases more than a dozen manatees in 1999, endangered to threaten the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service downgrades the West African manatee status from endangered to threatened in 2017. On an average, the manatees can live as long as 60 years and often more. And they are harmless, peaceful animals who pose no danger to anyone and are happy around humans. They just prey, survive on seagrass. And as they are very friendly and very peaceful animals, they also are very friendly with the humans and various other animals. And as per Florida Manatee Sanctuary Act, it is illegal to harass, disturb, play with, or even hug a manatee as the animal has been enlisted vulnerable. And if you are living in Orlando, go out and visit the Florida Manatee at SeaWorld or Blue Spring State Park. Consider recording a video of these sea cows. They come out like a memory. Support the cause of the holiday by updating news about their endangered status and the causes of this and simple fun facts with the hashtag save the manatee or manatee appreciation.
while you can only appreciate the animal from afar some conservation organizations and clubs are tirelessly working hands on for the cause so do your part and donate and contribute as much as as you can they can escalate their efforts the size of the lungs is two thirds of their entire body with a capacity up to 90% to replenish oxygen so they have massive lungs they survive on sea grass and spend 8 hours grazing every day to support their weight so they eat a lot there is always a new set of teeth growing behind the existing ones inside a manatee's mouth so they continuously replace their teeth their mouth is only to chew on sea grass not for breathing and they have good hearing despite having no apparent ear structure they breathe through their nose and hear with invisible ears long before they were known as manatees explorers and sailors thought these creatures were merry maids children stories and movies have made all of us yearn for the creature that has two hands and a fish like tail a manatee comes closest to this and we would never want them to go extinct one would think they would be lazy as anything given the weight they have to support not at all if you haven't watched a manatee amusing himself rolling in the water and making you go ow you are missing out on a beautiful sight almost a 1300 pound manatee moving as quick as fast as it can the female manatee remains pregnant for 12 months a whole year and takes care of her calf for several years just like human mother it is outrageous to kill so many years of love and nourishment so with this we shall end the commemoration and let's all support and extend our contributions in conservation of manatees today is also commemorated as whole grains sampling day in us it is a great way to end nutrition month and it helps to encourage people to add whole grains to their diet because of their numerous benefits whole grains are enriched with nutrients such as protein fiber b vitamins trace minerals copper zinc iron and magnesium and antioxidants the whole grain rich diet has been shown to reduce the risk of heart disease type 2 diabetes obesity and some forms of cancer it is something that should be added to every diet as it can do wonders for the body whole grains contain all the essential parts and naturally occurring nutrients of the entire grain see if the grain has been processed in any way the product should deliver approximately the same rich balance of nutrients that are found in the original grain see the whole grains council was founded in april 2002 by a group of millers manufacturers scientists and chefs at a whole chain summit organized by old west preservation trust in san diego they took strides to grow the organization into finding ways to promote increased consumption of the whole grains they had their first formal meeting in july 2003 where they outlined goals for the organization since its first meeting the whole grains council has grown from 9 members to almost 400 members including many industry leaders and has had celebrations of whole grain sampling they ever since most years grocery stores restaurants schools health centers universities food banks and community centers around the country participate in whole grain sampling day by offering live sampling events workshops and other fun activities that day as with all the foods 
whole grains don't cause weight gain unless you consume too many calories from them. Five to eight ounces of grains should be eaten daily and three to six ounces of them should be whole grains. They digest more slowly, but refined grains are beneficial to the blood as it keeps blood sugar and insulin levels down. So celebrate the day by taking up lessons and you can cook a number of delicious meals you can make from whole maize. Prepare a meal with whole grains to celebrate the day. Share the facts online and offline. And grains are produced in mass numbers in almost every continent in the world with more than 2.5 billion tons yearly. And corn is massively produced and America is the biggest producer followed by China, Brazil, Mexico and France. The cultivation of barley dates as far as 10,000 years ago is the oldest grains, one of the oldest grains. Wild rice isn't rice at all. It is the seed of aquatic grass and is not related to rice. Maize is Native American word, but not used in America and Canada, as they call it corn. Some stores offer sampling tests so that people can get some free food if they search for it. Seeing other people interested in whole grain sampling day gives us a sense of belonging. You automatically share a bond, especially if you participate in an event together. In the world full of food, that can sometimes be bad for one health. Whole grain sampling day promotes healthy food. These foods should be consumed more as they have lots of benefits. Today is also commemorated as Niagara Falls Runs Friday. This happened that Niagara Falls ran dry due to ice blockages in 1848. The waterfall continued to stay blocked for two days and the day aims to celebrate the extraordinary event that took place spanning from Ontario, Canada to New York, U United States. Niagara Falls runs dry day festivities usually involve offers for the establishments near the falls and celebration parties. Niagara Falls has never naturally dried up since. Is Niagara Falls formed over 12,000 years ago at the end of the Ice Age when the downpour of the water from the melting ice wore away rick layers to form the structure that exists today. The first people to witness the falls were most likely the Native Americans living in the regions of uh, surrounding the Horseshoe Falls. The area was later annexed by the French when Father Louis Hennepin reached the Niagara River in December 1678. Niagara Falls runs dry day, celebrates March 29, 1848, the day when a bitterly harsh winter gave way to ice on Lake Erie, which gradually broke away. Strong winds blew the ice to the mouth of the fall, thus suspending the flow of water for over 30 hours. Some of the first to notice the unusual event where nearby mill owners who realized that their water wheels had stopped, rotating. Soon, hordes of people cinched their way to the falls to witness the odd event they were able to witness for the first time since the forming of Niagara Falls, absolute silence in the place of roaring waterfall. Several people ventured across the riverbed, finding old ammunition used in the Battle of Chippewa. In 1840, at night, hundreds of people reportedly made the trek across the riverbed with lit torches in their heads. So Niagara Falls remained dry until the afternoon of March 30, when the winds reversed their direction and everything returned to the way it was.
you might wonder in 1969 also niagara fall area was dried up but it was not natural the drying up of the waterfall was done artificially to allow geological work so that is another uh, instance where you can find in the history that the niagara falls has been dried up and even in 2021 uh, also it was not completely dried up it was uh, more or less an human interest and these are entirely natural so waterfalls can exist under water even under water waterfalls and the tallest waterfall is angel falls in venezuela the waterfall with the biggest flow rate is inga falls in the democratic republic of the congo waterfalls are formed through process process of erosion so waterfalls are typically higher in their stream so the temporary drying up of the water niagara falls was a surreal event and waterfalls are fascinating it's an opportunity to learn about waterfalls few individuals are aware of the currents much less than it was even possible so the day broadens everyone's knowledge today is also commemorated as merry may day for its fabled creature that appeared in the literature mythology music films and pop culture for a long time it's a day to let one's imagine run wild and indulge in one's fascinated fascination with this aquatic creature we don't know whether it truly exists or not whether it is a work or fiction but whatever the solution is the ocean depths are filled with inexhaustible mysteries it is simply the big unknown it's now time to learn about their ancient origins history and cultural significance around the world the first existence of mermaids in human culture traces back to 1000 bc in assyria now known as syria in their mythology the fertility goddess agat atargatis becomes a merry maid after throwing herself into the lake to escape the grief and shame of killing her lover the mythology explores how atargatis was so beautiful that she couldn't fully transform herself into a fish rather she retained her feminine shape and the beauty about the waist but her legs were completely transformed into a fish tail the greek mythology then expands on the story from the assyrian myth which included stories of sinims also known as nereids and mermen also known as tritons the original assyrian description of the mermaids was manifested in the greek sirens but was rewritten as having wings like a bird rather than having a tail like a fish however romans traced the origin of mermaids in assyrian mythology by keeping their original description gorgeous fairy like women with fish tails this became the standard interpretation of mermaids up to the modern times despite being universally accepted and a product of fiction from its long line of varied mythologies several historians recorded sightings of actual mermaids in the ocean one of them is christopher columbus who reportedly saw these mermaids however he claimed that they weren't as beautiful as described in the mythic stories other accounts of sightings include english pirated bird teach also known as blackbird in mon- modern times the concept of mermaids has fully penetrated pop culture across the world from hans christian andersen fairy tale the little mermaid to its regular depictions in the films and television
So the Little Mermaid to its regular depictions in films and televisions, mermaids are indeed a product of human curiosity and fascination with the great unknown. So as per mythology, the four kinds of mermaids that existed in literary history include traditional, selkies, shapeshifters, and merfolk. According to myth, it has been said that merimaid tears gowns into a gem called aquamarine that is used by sailors for healing and protection. Merimaids are said to have beautiful singing voices as depicted in 1989 Disney animated film The Little Merimaid. The most uncommon type of mermaids often depicted in the stories in the oceanate kind where they only live in the sea. According to the Starbucks creative director, Steve Murray, the mermaid is the company's biggest symbol other than its employees. Just like gender fluid individuals, merimaids are seen as half women and half others. They are celebrated in the LGBT community as icons for transgender people, cisgender people, and bisexuals. Today is also commemorated as National Governance Professionals Day in Canada. Governance Professionals of Canada, GPC, is proud to announce the launch of International, sorry, inaugural of National Governance Professionals Day, which is celebrated annually on the last Wednesday of March. So this initiative created by the Governance Professionals of Canada will serve as an opportunity to recognize and celebrate the role of governance professionals across all organizations in Canada. The inaugural National Governance Professionals Day will take place on Mar has taken place on March 29, 2023, that is today, in collaboration with the Institute of Governance. So this is the first, uh, today it is being launched, uh, I mean, it has been launched. So you might be wondering who are these governance professionals? They may be corporate secretary, corporate council, executive director, or have other titles. They are responsible for implementing governance policies and procedures, monitoring compliance with laws and regulations, managing the board and its committee meetings and processes, among other key activities. In India also, we have company secretaryship, also known as CS, who are as famous as CA chartered accountants. You can see in every company, uh, whether it is a limited company or a um, public company, all the companies registered in the Ministry of Company Affairs or Corporate Affairs, you know, all those who are registered under the Act, every company needs the services of company secretary. So these are also known as governance professionals in Canada. So they play a crucial role in ensuring that an organization is operating an efficient, ethical, and compliant manner, and they ensure that the organization is following leading governance practices to protect it from potential risks. Their role is vital to the long-term success of the organization and its reputation. Governance professionals play a critical role in the success of their organizations, and National Governance Professionals Day is a chance to acknowledge the hard work and dedication of these individuals, said Lynn Bagard, president of GPC. We are excited to launch this initiative to grow the recognition for the role and value it brings boards and organizations in Canada. GPC will also hold its annual excellence in governance awards showcase on the same day to celebrate the winners and shortlisted organizations in its 2022 awards ceremony. So leading up the event, GPC will feature activities on various platforms, including social media, to celebrate the contributions of governance professionals and encourages all organizations to join in recognizing 
the important work that their governance professionals play for their organizations. So the Canadian Society of Corporate Secretaries, CSCS in short, is created following the published day report of uh, day report by the TSX, where are the directors in 1994. Canada passes Bill 198 to strengthen corporate governance and create confidence in the Canadian market in 2003 with a new law. The first GPC Excellence in Governance Awards, EGS, are handed out at GPC's annual conference, which aim to recognize the important contribution that organizations, their boards, and governance professionals make in terms of best practices that build up and sustain stakeholder value in Canada. So recognizing excellence in 2030, the CSCS, is rebranded as the Governance Professionals of Canada, GPC, following membership and industry consultations to become more inclusive of the many professionals within the governance function. So it's, it has new beginnings in 2016. So GPC certification program is launched, GPCD, to provide governance professionals with a one of its kind formalized educational program first of its kind in 2017 in Canada. Governance Professionals of Canada celebrates the inaugural National Governance Professionals Day in 2023, that is today. As already mentioned, governance professionals act as a liaison between the board and the management to ensure that the organization operates ethically, responsibility, uh, responsibly and sustainably through good governance. To become a member of uh, or learn how GPC can elevate your career as a governance professional, you can visit gpcanada.org. The GPCD is a recognized Canadian registration attained by completing the governance and practice program. The program was created to help strengthen the skills of those who practice governance and to assist them, their boards and organizations in enhancing their overall governance process. Today is also commemorated as National Smokes and Mirrors Day in US. It is most likely intended to both to promote appreciation of the art and skill of magicians who specialize in illusions and to remind us all to be wary of deceptive practices in daily life. Smokes and mirrors usually means that they are being hoodwinked in into believing something is true or that is functional when it really isn't. It's a reminder that unlike Dorothy, we shouldn't wait until the end to pull back the curtain to see if we thought it is a real, actual, masterful fakery. Skill, secrecy, and deception have been driving the practice of magical arts for centuries. Archaeologists have founded the elementary cup and ball trick depicted on the wall of an Egyptian tomb. Priests were the main practitioners of the magic in Pharaonic Egypt, and they were seen as guardians of the secret knowledge given by the gods to humanity to ward off the blows of fate. The classic technique of smoke and mirrors was in use by the 1770s in, German, in Germany. Honan gods Scrofford manipulated these elements to make it appear that an entity was hovering in the air. Scrofford relied on a magic lantern, a primitive precursor of the slide projector, which paired a concave mirror and a convex lenses and a candle for illumination to create images. Scrofford has established a breakaway Freemason uh, free Lodge in Leipzig 
founded on the assertion that only this group knew the true mosaic truths and only he could communicate with the spirit world. He bought a coffee house and renovated it as a venue where he held sinuses. After his death, other showmen carried on for him, serving up what came to be called as phantasmagoria shows. These shows specialized in supernatural sensationalism. In 1865, a British academic created one of the most famous mirror tricks, the Sphinx Illusion which was popularized by magician Colin Stoddard. The illusion claimed to be revealed the disembodied head of the Sphinx, which had been cursed by Pharaoh. The underpinning of the illusion is two contagious mirrors angled so that they reflect a surrounding background material, while the subject merely kneels down with the head presented above the whole artifice. The detached head appears to be float, this fundamental principle of reflection is still essential to deception. Scottish philosopher and scientist Sir David Brewster, inventor of the kaleidoscope, debunks and demystifies apparitions in letters on mag natural magic, explaining that the eye can't be trusted to make sense of our world in 19, uh, sorry, in 1832. British scientist John Henry Pepper first demonstrated Pepper's ghost a special effects technique still used today in haunted houses and theatres to produce ghostly images by reflecting them off a sheet of plexiglass with a grain of salt in 1862. One of the most well-known mirror tricks, Colonel Stoddard's framed Sphinx illusion, is created by a British professor in 1865. Modern magic by Professor Hoffman, published in London, was by George Rotledge and Sons, is the first book in English that explains how to perform magic from coin and card tricks to large stage illusions. Bill and Millet Larson continue to their late father's prediction to the performance of magic by opening the Magic Castle in Los Angeles as an exclusive private club for members of the Academy of Magical Arts in 1960. Chris Angel's professional career begins with the show, with the show World of Illusion at Madison Square Garden, which is followed by the show Chris's Chris Angel Mind Freak, which continues until 2003-99. So in English language, the term describes actions and things that are not what they seem, manipulation, deception, or simply cannot be explained, is what smokes and mir mirrors mean in English. So the smoke and mirrors used by magicians to create illusions is known as blue smoke and mirrors. So anyone can learn music. What skills you already have can affect your ability to learn mu magic. Sorry, magic. Uh, just like they can affect any other skill, a competent magician can study and enhance their craft in a very in a variety of ways too, so you can also learn magic. So to become a great magician and distinguish yourself, you need skills such as, but not limited to manual dexterity, presenting skills, memory, a thorough understanding of psychology, memory, intervention, interventiveness, and tenacity are all required. 
Every town used to have a magic shop where kids bought their starter tricks and learned to develop some manual dexterity. It's never too late to learn. Most of the shops are gone now, but you can go online and watch a video to learn the spoon bending trick and other classics. There are several movies about magic you can watch either alone or with your friends and family. Movies like Now You See Me and Now You See Me Too or even series like Lupin are based on the magic. Although we know that the magician's toolkit of smoke and mirrors contains misdirection, duplication, false bottoms, and manual dexterity, we enjoy knowing we are being deceived and trying to figure out how that has happened. Magic makes our brain refuse to accept what our eyes claim to have seen. Today is also commemorated as Little Red Wagon Day. It is a token of appreciation for those cheerful lady rides in a little red car. For that matter, any color car pulled by moms or dads on a summer afternoon. Or for that matter, any season. If you have sailed in a wagon on Independence Day parades or were pushed in a toy red van or for that matter, any color in your childhood, it's time to relive, relive, sorry, relive those memories and make some more. Paid forward is observed and commemorated today across the world as an opportunity to be kind to young black men, support them and treat them like human beings. So it came about as a result of growing concern among communities over how young black boys and men were being unfairly targeted. That this day aims to address racism and offset the demeaning effects of being treated criminally by asking people to go out of their way to be kind to young black boys and men and treat them with dignity and respect. Today is also commemorated as Texas loves the children's day in the state of Texas to support the victims of child abuse, acknowledge their trauma and work towards ending child abuse in the state. Child abuse refers to the physical, sexual, or mental mistreatment of children, which can range from neglect to assault. The state of Texas sets a day aside to address these issues to help children suffering from abuse, as well as help adults who have been affected by the abuse in their lives. This day is also an opportunity for the professionals working to rescue and rehabilitate children to share their knowledge on how to recognize victims and their methods for helping them. Child abuse, sometimes called the child maltreatment, refers to the physical, sexual, and psychological abuse of children, which can be manifested in terms of assault and neglect. It may also refer to the instances when parents are unavailable, refuse to, or fail to act to help children when they are suffering in some way. Cruelty to children has been a common customary activity across the world. Over time, people developed more awareness as they studied the defenselessness of children and how they were affected by the abuse and how they transformed when placed in safe spaces of safety. Soon, the study of child abuse emerged as a discipline and child, children rights began to be understood as an important aspect that needed attention and study. The greater investigation is taking place today about how children are seen in the society and how their powerlessness is exploited by the society for its gains. More and more corporal punishment is seen as abuse, even if it is intended as a method of teaching children. And the jury and harm caused don't teach children anything except fear. Child abuse can cause physical and psychological developmental issues that develop into 
chronic conditions that affect adults long after they have been removed from abusive spaces. Neglect is the most common form of child abuse and there are over 6 lakh cases of child abuse in the US. Accident abu accidental abuse is usually enacted from place of ignorance and very subtle. The majority of the victims are very young of reported. The majority of reported cases have victims between 5 and 11 years old. It is estimated that one in seven children have been abused across the country. It means a lot of children are abused. Children below one year of age are the most vulnerable to abuse with the most reported fatalities. In over 70% of the cases of child abuse, the abusers are the parents of the children. Most unfortunate that parents are the abusers in 70% of the cases. Five children die per day as a result of child abuse. So we see a lot of deaths that are happening due to abuse. So with this, we shall conclude today's commemorations. And we thank you everyone for joining us on this wonderful day. So quickly fill up the feedback form, which is being shared in the chat box. Those who have not registered for today's uh, webinar series, we request everyone to quickly register after filling up the feedback form in the form of polls in Zoom platform. And see you all tomorrow at the same time. Take care. Good night. The feedback form will be active for next five minutes. We request everyone to quickly fill up the feedback form.